And then at one point she was, she told her friend, take a picture of me, take a picture of me. And she did a fake karate kick at the gorillas. The guide said, don't do that. And she goes, what? He didn't even react. Oh, my God. This is the African guide, the Rwandan guide, whose living is to see these gorillas and protect them on a daily basis. Then she saw the silverback and started pounding her chest. (laughs) And the the guide said, if you do this, I can't protect you. And it is not my job anymore if you will not listen to me. And she was like, like, what? I'm just being funny. I wanted to fucking kill her, dude. I wanted the gorillas to kill her. I wanted to help them. Welcome back to Oops the Podcast. All right, lots to unpack here. I got something for you. Please. Julio, Julio, I don't know (laughs) where you came up with that idea. Dude, this guy was a huge turkey. What is this, Japan? Which is one of the reasons why I hadn't told you about it. No, and I also just assumed you were saving it for the pod if you were going to tell me. Yeah, yeah. Which, of course you were. Oh, yeah. Welcome back to Oops the Podcast, everybody. I am Julio Gallerati. I am sitting next to our buddy, Francis Ellis. We Hi. have Chris, we have Ryan, we have the whole squad in the building. Here we are. This is the podcast. This is it. That we do. This is the one right here. This uh, is it. Cooler air has prevailed. This is it. Fall is in the air, and it's really I'm really enjoying it. So, dude. Dude, Hillary can cook her ass off, dude. Is that right? She is an incredible cook. She really is just so good. And she'll do shit where I'm like, how did you know how to do that? She's like, I don't know. Like, what do you mean? You don't know. You just, and she doesn't even, she's not like a person who's cooked a ton. I don't know Mm. where she's learned to have this cooking intuition. But dude, I swear to God, if you're like, what is your favorite food? My answer is anything that Hillary cooks. Wow. She makes like five dishes, bro, that are my favorite fucking thing I've ever had. Ooh, I'd like to try some of those. They're very nice. Each one of the five. They involve nice things, too. There's, you know, she makes this incredible, like, fucking noodle thing. Dude, I don't even know what it is. I'm just like, do the noodle thing. Yeah, do the noodle thing. The noodle thing. It's like kind of like stir fry situation. She does a couple nice numbers on salmon. Ah, she's out here bro salmon boys she's out here in the street preparing the salmon boy the salmon boy uh so yeah that's that's th- something i wanted to add i'm to glad the discussion i'm glad to hear it i had a pretty good salmon boy last night at dinner yeah you did oh yeah was a good salmon boy oh uh, good salmon boy yeah. did she be cooking bro i'm like i literally am like if she is not there to make it it just won't get made like if we have food that we bought we fixed our fridge which i've said already on the podcast we haven't had a freezer for like seven months uh-huh. having a freezer now we've forgotten what a freezer <laughs> we've just gotten so used to not putting things in the freezer that like we're learning again how to how to use a freezer i'm glad you fixed that it's really nice that is good we got a new fridge i can't believe you didn't have a freezer for that long dude when's the last time you got a fridge delivered to your house <laughs> a while ago i bet two or three apartments ago yeah yeah i it, it took Two seconds. The entire process, I've never seen something go so well and wow. quickly and easily. And like our building's a pain in the ass too. We need to get a certificate of insurance right. on this bullshit. Right. Um, you guys have to do that too? I think so. Probably, right? I think we did. Uh, the thing that really is not as easy, man, one time moving our, my piano into a second mm. floor of a walk up oh apartment God. was not easy. That sounds terrible. That was tough. Um, but dude, literally, like, I could have, like, you could have gone and done the simplest task and come back and like the entire process of the fridge, removing the old fridge, replacing the new fridge, two seconds. Wow. Done. Amazing. So anyway, wow. things aren't as hard as they seem sometimes. Yeah. No more sympathy for refrigerator delivery, men. Yeah. Um, okay. So I want to hear about gorillas. Yeah. Bro. Let me, let me, let me, I want to get through my shit because <laughs> I, I my God, I just keep talking about it and I, I'm sure people are like, man, haven't you done anything else in your life? <laughs> Indeed. I mean, it's your honeymoon, bro. It yeah. requires a comprehensive, uh, you know, yeah. recap. Oh, I appreciate that. So, so we went to um, Rwanda. Mm-hmm. And you've been there. I have. And in fact, arriving in Rwanda, I thought, oh, I'm seeing pieces of Julio everywhere. <laughs> this is a path he's Sprinkles walked before. Of Julio. To go to the genocide yeah. memorial and to know that you'd been there was interesting cuz I'm so far from home. Yeah, yeah. In such a remote place that I would never have thought I would get to in my life. And yet somebody that I talk to on a daily basis has done this. Did that make you feel more comfortable? 
it it was kind of fun. <laughs> I thought, oh, I, is that his cologne? Second Am I smelling degree that bonding. On his, is that his deodorant on that staircase over there? That's I don't know. funny, bro. We got to our lodge for the gorilla trekking. It was a three and a half hour drive from Kigali on winding roads. I got a little car sick. Didn't love it. Journey felt like a, a pretty big, yeah, pretty yeah. big time journey. So we drove from Kigali to the area where our lodge was, which is three and a half hours away. And it, it's back roads, winding roads into the mountains, all of this through, you know, I think some huge portion of the country is agrarian. They're all farmers. Yeah, yeah. Um, Tons of farms. And yeah. Stuff. And they all subsist on farming. And um, which meant that for a huge I don't know, 80% of that three and a half hour drive. I mean, the, the roads were packed with people, packed with people who have bicycles, which they have laden with sugarcane stalks, huge bags of sweet potatoes, cabbages, whatever it is. And they're walking their packed bicycle and pushing it up a hill for miles to a market where they're then trading whatever they've got for some other good to then bring it back to a different market where they get a better price for that. Mm. It is challenging labor. I mean, there was a huge contrast between the luxury of our tourism and the immediate surrounding of, of, of work and livelihood mm -hmm. um, to the degree that you become self-conscious about it. I certainly did mm -hmm. where when we drove to do the gorilla trekking, we go in, we do the gorilla trekking, which I'll tell you about. You come back out, you're in this very poor town and you park your car and then you go do the drill, gorilla trekking. You get back to your car. Your driver had set up a white tablecloth over a folding table with a bottle of champagne and two champagne glasses and he pours you a glass of champagne. It's noon. A number of people from that town, that village, have just collected to watch you. And they're like, this isn't something we see every day. As you drink champagne at noon after having. Yeah, yeah. And, and I'm like, dude, I don't, we don't want this. Can we do this in the car? I appreciate the touch. But this is making me uncomfortable. I don't want to be displaying such ridiculous you know who needs champagne at noon mm -hmm. we don't even want that we just mm -hmm. hiked right. i need water maybe a gatorade right um and certainly not in front of all these people so we would take a couple sips and then i would give the bottle the remaining bottle of champagne to one of the men and then he and his buddies would pass it around and have a good time and that was i guess nice i don't know but it was just like oh god uh, I don't know. Felt weird. Felt mm -hmm. weird about it. Mm -hmm. um, but overall, uh, pretty cool. Learned a lot about Rwanda. Milk is incredibly important. Cows are the height of, of wealth in Rwanda to the degree that when the ethnic divide was determined, primarily, by the way, by the, the colonial power. I think it was the Dutch. Mm -hmm. And then the Belgians came in. But the way that they said who was a Hutu and ver versus who was a Tutsi was families that had 10 or more cows were Tutsi, 10 or, le or nine or less were Hutu. So it was just a wealth divide. And then it became an ethnic thing. Mm. Um, Interesting. And when you get married in Rwanda, the dowry must be cows, even though people of means know that like, well, why don't we should just sell the cow and then give mm -hmm. the money because we can't even keep a cow on our land. It, it costs money to feed it and all that. But there is this still belief that like, if, as long as you have a cow, then you have milk, which means you can provide food and drink for your family. Mm -hmm. And I asked our guide, I was like, do you drink milk? And he was like, yeah, I drink two liters a day. Oh my. And I was like, dude, what? <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, that's how I start my day. That's my breakfast. I drink two liters of milk a day. And he that's goes, my wife drinks six liters. Jesus. And that's why we have no health problems. I was like, dude, have you tried oat milk? <laughs> it's fucking delicious. <laughs> um, but they drink tons of milk. Um, that was really interesting. The 
there was a cool thing too where like the lodge we were staying at you know which was super sick um had awesome breakfast spreads with to-go sandwiches and like energy bars granola bars bites all this and they were like pack your bag for your hike because you're going to eat up on the mountain with the gorillas and we would pick we 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 had read in some travel vlog thing pack a bunch of extra sandwiches to give to your porters and the guides they'll appreciate it and so on on day on the second day that we went in we pe- i picked up like 14 sandwiches i was just stealing them from the lodge and went up there and was handing them out like i was you know the king of sandwiches people liked them that was cool the gorillas are the coolest thing ever yeah let's hear this is what i want i need to hear about this so the first day you get to select the difficulty of your hike is there any value to like does a more difficult hike get you a better gorilla situation uh you you can kind of like the different families where the families are de- determines where how hard the hike is mm. and to see them and certain families are better than others. So someone has like scouted it out. The, the trackers go up in the morning, find mm. out where they are and then stay with them as they move through the forest to let you know where they are. Um, and we said, well, you know, on the first day we're pretty, we're pretty fit people. Like we'd love to have a bit of a challenge. I think we can, we can handle a medium, medium to hardish hike. They said, okay. And we went and did it, and it was fucking hard. I told, dude, I told you, those fucking hikes out, yeah. out there are no joke. It was now. an hour and f- like it was pretty much two hours, and the ground is really soft and muddy. You're, you're slipping falling, around, fucking. There's like yeah. no path, dude. Yeah. It's like really you're challenging. ducking under. You, I mean, there, it's full blown. There were times where the the guide had to hack, yeah, bamboo out of the way in order for us to pass. Did it rain? Not miraculously not on our two days mm. of hikes the next day which was the only day we were in rwanda and not doing the trek poor dumped wow it's really poor. lucky. i got lucky in that regard too but i remember just like i fell so many times i was like whole i'm not trying to like i'm not trying to like get involved in your story but this is a noteworthy thing to add like you can always get involved okay. in my but story. dude i like a man a, men were holding my hand i was holding a man's yeah. hand how often that's how often i was slipping and falling. it's it's not easy um, I also they I like used the boots that they provided. Yeah, which were like shitty. We brought pretty good like hiking boots, which I was really grateful That's for. Move, the yeah. lodge gave us gaiters, which I was like, I don't need that. Mm. We fucking needed them totally because they're stinging nettles oh, that shit. crush you. Mm. What they, are, what is that again? It's a little plant that has these tiny, tiny little fur like needles, oh, and it goes through your pants, oh, God. and it will sting. Jesus. For about 15 minutes, and then it goes away. But for that 15 minutes, you want to itch it. Did, did you got them? I, I happened to me a few times. They're unavoidable. Jesus. They're everywhere. Jesus. And they especially get your hands, so they tell you to wear thick rubber gloves, which I didn't have. But I don't know. Still pretty cool. Now, on our trek in, there was an Italian woman who was the single most annoying person I've ever met in my life. <laughs> I'm telling you, and I knew she was going to be a problem. <laughs> like I pegged it from the first five minutes. We were doing our orientation talk. The guide is talking and she's trying to tag his jokes. Oh God. Like she's jumping in and he'd be like, uh, we see the gorillas. <clears throat> they might be mating a little push, push in the bush. And she'd be like, you know, I hope we get to see some of that. If you know what I mean. Oh God. And he's like, it's like, dude, shut the fuck up. Yeah, this guy is doing his job. We're in Rwanda. We've all traveled from across the world to get here. You're not the guide. Shut up. Yeah. And he's giving important safety briefings, and she's trying to make a mockery of it, you know? And we got into the car then to go to our spot. And this is how I knew she was going to be a problem. Sierra turned to me and said, I'm worried about that woman. <laughs> you're like, and all I'm right, like, it's not just if me. you're worried about that woman, and you are the, as kind of a person as you are, you can't even imagine how how nervous i am <laughs> and sure enough dude we walk we went on this hike she's talking the whole time did you split up with her eventually you can't so just that day you were with her the whole time terrible to the degree that we would stop every you know and we get to the gorillas and she's she's talking you know the guide is like okay we're here they're they're right around that corner um now here's the thing we're gonna like leave our everything you don't need other than your camera leave your bag here do this we communicate with the silverback to let him know we're okay. To let him know we're okay, we say, <clears throat> and if he's okay and it's a good time for him and he wants us to see his family and it's fine, he will respond. 
That's crazy. But if it's not a good time, he's going to go, ah, 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 which is bad news. And then if he starts sucking air into his lungs and filling his chest, which means he's going to start pounding his chest and then charge at you, you need to get on your knees and avoid eye contact. Jesus. To submit and let him know that he's the alpha. Now, as he's explaining this to us, this woman is looking for opportunities to make fucking jokes or being like, you know, oh, no, like, oh, I hope we get to see that. I'm going to pound my chest back and let him know who I am. <laughs> and I'm, and I, I, I turned to her and I went, can you stop? I need to hear this. Oh, what did she do? She kind of shut up. She was like, oh, you know, <laughs> but it didn't deter her, dude. That did not put the lid on it. I went straight to her. I was I was firm yet fair. I was firm yet fair. I was like, warning sign. Please. I said, I, I said, please stop. I need to hear this. Because it was a safety briefing mm -hmm. for wild animals, which I have been trying to see for six years. Mm -hmm. We have paid thousands of dollars to come see them. This is the moment. We are on the doorstep of the wild gorillas, and some court jester is demanding the spotlight. She so was she, alone? She was with a friend, an American, and I did turn to her, and I said, is that your friend? Hint, hint. And she goes, yeah, she can be a lot. Oh, funny. And we got, dude, this only gets worse. <laughs> this gets worse. So we get to the gorillas, right? First encounter with them. They're running around. They're playing. Little babies, uh, adolescents, mischievous, rolling around. Totally fine with the humans. Totally fine with us. We're kind of, you know, keeping our distance. Now, again, I know we have an hour with them. I don't know how long that's going to feel. I don't know if we're going to accomplish in an hour everything that we want with the gorillas, right? So I'm a little nervous. I feel the, the clock ticking, and I'm thinking, okay, there's there's seven people in this group, seven hikers that came in. It's me, Sierra, another cool dude, uh, the American girl, the Italian nightmare, and then another couple who's, like, perfectly fine. And... I'm thinking, okay, we're all gonna we're all gonna be gracious to each other. Everyone's gonna take turns getting the best view, right? This Italian woman thought she was alone on this trip. Like we'd have a very thin view into a dense thicket of the family of gorillas, and it was like only one person could view in there at a time. She would rush to the front and not move. To the point where it was like Okay, I guess we're just not seeing those. Gorillas. Oh God, that's so crazy. And then they're like, like I'd be taking a picture of Sierra, or the guide would be like, "Would you like a picture?" And you know, we would set up to have a photo with like the massive silverback behind us, and she would get in the fucking picture behind us. She'd like photo bomb us, or or like get behind us and take a Give picture. Give you bunny ears. Yeah, not even like, but dude, not even that. She would just like, she would just not care that a photo was being taken, and she would just get in the photo and face the gorilla. And dude, she, I, I don't even know how to describe to you how bad it was. That sounds pretty. But bad. she was so obnoxious and and so intent, so utterly indifferent to other people. Just a terrorist. That sucks. It Making sucks. it about herself. Dude. So wait, I take it that the gorilla went, mm -mm. Yeah, he did. And then at one point, she was she told her friend, take a picture of me, take a picture of me. And she did a fake karate kick at the gorillas. The guide said, don't do that. And she goes, what? He didn't even react. Oh, my God. This is the African guide, the Rwandan guide, whose living is to see these gorillas and protect them on a daily basis. Then, a couple minutes later, and I'm, I'm like, I'm like, fuck's sake, is nobody going to say anything? Is nobody going to stop this woman from terrorizing this, these, this group of gorillas? And then, a couple minutes later, dude, the, she, we, we, we got to the silverback finally, who, by the way, was unbelievable. I mean, just a completely different order of magnitude animal 700 Huge. pounds regal like how big are we talking like dude, just enormous just huge like would it fit in this room yeah yeah but like yeah <laughs> no but like it's like muscle it's muscle. yeah yeah but like if it was standing how tall is it i mean it's more girthy than he kind of walks height. around on all fours and got it but his arms are huge right dude look at this guy Wow. I mean, how old is this thing? 
I, they can they they get to like I don't know I think twenties thirties. How, how many of them are? How many like silverbacks? Sixteen. Are there? So some families have multiple, but if they have multiple, it's usually because the alpha silverback has had sons that have grown to the age of silverback. Do the fathers and sons get along? They do. And here's something interesting. Sometimes the young sons get to an age where they want to mate with one of the wives of the alpha silverback. Of their dad? Yeah. But they won't do it in front of him because if they do, he'll fight them. So they go do it in secret, right? Jesus. As the guides put it, push, push in the bush. And then if the wives know that they're pregnant, they are very smart and they will immediately go mate with the alpha silverback to wow. make him think he's the one who he's the father him. of their children. God, bro. He's hoes be trifling. How about that? Huh? <laughs> That's crazy. Um, That's crazy. And then if a silverback goes off, sometimes the young uh, adolescent silverbacks, like I think the, the headed silverback will choose like an heir to take over and protect the family. And the ones that he doesn't choose might leave to go find their own mates and own families oh, wow. and stuff. And if they come into a family that's already made and they get accepted by the wives or whatever, they will murder all the offspring, the babies of the previous alpha silverback because they want their own bloodline to populate that family. Wow, Jesus. So wait, the, what happened to the other one again? What happened to the other alpha silverback? He had to fight, he fought him? What do you mean? Like he left that his one might have died, okay, okay. or or so something like might orphaned. have. He, okay. They get sick, like they get yeah. pneumonia. Yeah. They get they get human diseases, which is why we had to wear masks. Mm. Because not only can we transmit diseases to them, they can give us diseases. Mm -hmm. And then you know, there's twenty. I think there's twenty gorilla families in Rwanda. Twelve of them have been habituated to humans, which takes quite a process. Okay, Got um, it. they're accustomed. They can be visited, but. It's all, frankly, for their own conservation because this was a critically endangered species mm -hmm. 30 years ago. They got down to 200, and now they're in the, over 1,000. Wow. Um, and they're celebrated. They're mm -hmm. celebrated by the whole country. They have names and shit, right? There was a big naming ceremony right when we got there, and all these celebrities came in, including Leo? The, the now King of England ah, and Camilla, Charles. King George, Charles, and Didier Drogba, ah. the Chelsea legend, who was sitting at a lunch table directly next to us the day that we arrived at our lodge. Dude, I saw him in Monte Carlo. We both saw it. That's a, f a really funny random thing. That we that? both saw Didier Drogba in the same year. Yeah. In different countries. And I knew who he was, too. <laughs> I was like, that's Didier Drogba. I did not. Even though he's shaved his head since. I did not. And the guy playing blackjack next to us nudged Hillary and told her that it was Didier Drogba. He no did not way. tell me because he's trying to flirt with... The pretty young girl wow. didn't care about me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Last thing this Italian woman did, she saw the silverback and started pounding her chest. And the, the guide said, if you do this, I can't protect you. And it is not my job anymore if you will not listen to and me. And she, had she already karate kicked? She had already done that and been yelled at for How it. old is she? 35. Jesus, dude. Dude, I've never met someone this obnoxious. That's so annoying. And she was like, she was like, what? I'm just being funny. Oh, my God. I wanted like to the fucking most... kill her, dude. I wanted the gorillas to kill her. I wanted to help them. <laughs> I mean, bro, thank God she wasn't American, at least. No. Because you're like fucking Americans of traveling around being turkeys. Dude, at least she was fucking Italian. Which, dude, sometimes Italians can really be a handful. But she Chris, spoke as Chris perfect <laughs> English, like with a with a hint of an accent. She had a, definitely a hint of an accent. What? He thinks he's funny. Not not even that strong. She had studied in and she had like a degree like British? in America. She, oh, okay. No, okay. Okay. it was okay. like you could tell she was not American, but but her English was pretty damn fluent. Could barely tell. Yeah. But she, man, I don't know. So it was it's tough. Whacked, it was yeah. tough. And, and I it was that whole time. I just thanked God that we were going again the next day. Let me ask you this. If the gorilla had reacted to her pounding and kicked her ass, would he then take it out on the rest of the group? I don't think so. Interesting. They're chill as hell, man. They're, They're chill. chill. Huh? And they won't fuck. They're so Because every day a group of people visits them for one hour. Right. But it's only one group of people. Do they throw them anything? Any like snacks or something? No. No incentives? It's You're not fun. allowed to touch them. They're still no, wild. No, not you. I'm saying like the, the like, the guys running the show like no. do they they don't there's no incentives for the gorillas what they'll do though is if they 
see that one of them has like broken a leg or gotten sick, they'll treat it. And what they'll do is they'll, 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 they'll shoot it with like a trank gun, anesthetize it, chase the rest of the family off. And then they will treat the wounded gorilla for days. Um, but they'll follow the family to the degree that as the gorilla comes back around, they will reintroduce it to the family healed. And so are they like thrilled to see the guy? Like at they, this point, do they know that that's what they do? Like, are they, I don't know if is they get there that. trauma. I don't know if they get what's going on there, but no, I don't think that most of the gorillas now are as fearful. I think the wild ones might, st- I mean, I'm, I think there still is poaching, but it's weird. It's not, it's not killing them. It's, kidnapping the babies and then sending them to like exotic animal farms uh, like tiger king yeah around the world china mm-hmm. america and you know having baby up. gorillas in zoos and shit or like rich people's homes jesus yeah that's crazy when we were driving to where you start the gorilla hike we i was sitting in the front seat we're driving on these dirt roads there are people everywhere and lots of kids and the kids will run along the car and wave at you and yell, Amakuru, which means rich white person. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but it's a term of affection, supposedly. Interesting. Interesting. And they've been taught this because it's been impressed upon them that the tourism that has now come to the region is very good for everybody. Right. It trickles down to the markets, to the farmers, to the teachers, to the schools. All of this. Everyone's benefiting from the fact that the Amakuru are there. And in fact, the term also applies weirdly to anyone, even from Rwanda, who has kind of like made it into a different industry or wealth class. So our driver, who now works solely in um, hospitality, like his friends all call him Amakuru because he speaks English and he's like paid in tips and, you know, works, makes, makes a lot of money. Um, so I kind of got excited about this and I was like enjoying it and all these kids waving at me, smiling at me. And I was like yelling back. Like I was, I was, I was learned how to say thank you. And, uh, and they, and I was saying that and saying it back and they were like giggling and all this. It was really cool. We even drove by a school at one point and it was like 50 kids and I was like, this is the coolest thing ever, you know? I felt, like, felt like Michael Scott uh, in, the, in the Scott's Tots episode where he's just so overcome by, like, the respect and adulation he's receiving from all these kids that he's promised scholarships to <laughs> <laughs> that he's, like, caught up in the moment. Anyway, it's really cool, awesome. But we then drove by a kid who was with two of his buddies. He was probably, like, 12 and they were amakuru waving smiling and as he's waving he then gave me the finger <laughs> but with a big smile on his face and i started laughing like being naughty yeah and i started laughing and our guide our driver said what are you what's so funny <laughs> and i was like oh that little kid gave me the finger he slams uh, on his brakes i go wait what he goes that's not right he can't do that and i'm like what the fuck no it's fine i think he's just kidding he goes no Rolls down his window, hails a woman who's like in a doorway. She goes, he goes, mama, mama. And then he says something to her in uh, Kiruwanda, Kiru, 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 yeah. And is like, yo, you got to go discipline that kid. He gave my guest the finger. And she was like, you're right. Absolutely. And she walked back and smacked that kid in the head. <laughs> and I was like, oh, Jesus Christ. A little shit. That's you and get. I was like, I was like that it didn't bother me like it's fine he goes it doesn't matter they need to know that we we respect our guests here in rwanda it goes against like our our ethos of welcoming everybody all of that uh and he needs to know that that's not the right thing to do um i'm like okay jesus we drive another 20 minutes we pass another kid who does exactly the same thing finger right (laughs) this time i don't say say anything we keep driving we pass a third kid a girl who does it the driver sees her do it slams on his brake does the same thing yells to a woman like yo go hit that girl 
And the one, the mother or the woman was like, oh, don't worry about her. She's got mental problems. <laughs> her brain is like addled or something. Gag. And then my guide was like, or my driver was like, oh, yeah, no, we, I guess we don't have to worry oh, about I that. I forgot about her. She yeah, doesn't, yeah. you know. And I'm like, what? She doesn't Mental count. problems <laughs> manifest by people giving the finger. Anyway, but what we would learn, which was so fascinating, was that there is this community effort to raise the children. And it stems from the fact that when the genocide happened in 1994, instantly tens and tens of thousands of children became orphan mm. orphans. So families and, th and these kids, they're you know three years old. They have no idea who their uncles or aunts are. They don't know their own names. They don't know who they can call to raise them so the whole nation as one decided okay we're gonna parent these kids together we're gonna i'm gonna adopt two kids i'm gonna take in kids all this and since then there has main there's been this idea that like we all together as a community raise the children so in in line with that everybody can discipline everyone else's children and he our driver was like yeah if my kids gave the finger to someone i would expect mm, and hope got it, got it. that if my neighbor were around and i weren't he they would, would go oh, hit okay them. interesting so i was like not oh, this case here huh? it's kind of an interesting it's an interesting approach wrinkle. yeah uh but i'd say it could be a nice thing like especially like hillary's family is sort of like that like she's super close with her like growing up, she was really close with her aunt and uncle, and like her aunt and uncle had the jurisdiction, I, I believe, to like discipline, like not to like smack the shit out of them, obviously, but just like you know whatever they they could talk to them the way they talk to their yeah, uh, like they could talk to them. The, the relationship was similar to a parent relationship with a parent. I didn't have just like that. a night. I didn't either, but it's nice. It's kind of there's something nice about having that like big close. You know, yeah, it's like an interesting thing. It it does really lend credence to the the saying of uh, "it takes a village." Yeah, yeah totally. Um, wait, really so sad. what were your personal interactions like with the gorillas? So I was giving them the <clears throat> thing the whole time. You continued to do that. Oh yeah, you let them know the whole time. <clears throat> like every couple minutes, you throw them another one. And are you you're encouraged to do that? Yeah, so, yeah, and like the so silverback, everybody's sitting there doing that. Yeah, the silverback <laughs> comes back. And by the way. Later on, when Sierra and I would make love, we would make that sound to each other, <laughs> which was kind of fun. That was kind of fun. That not going to lie. That was fun. Um, yeah. Mm -mm. Um, mm -mm. So you should start going. Yeah. The gorillas, I mean, dude, they're just awesome. They eat. They play. You know. They, you're in their path without knowing which way they're going to go. And if they want to come through where you're standing, like that's happened to Sierra. And one of them just bopped her on the knee. <laughs> they kind of just like swing their arms like, like toddlers. You know, they're just like, ah, you know. And they're really fucking cool. They're so human. They are hilarious. Um, and it's just magical. It's mm. like, oh, th this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. That's great. It, I hate to say this. It kind of blew the lions out of the water, <laughs> which mean, is what I wanted. Think of this. There's an entire tourism industry that has sprung up as a result of one species in mm -hmm. Rwanda. That's the only reason people are really going. Whereas in Kenya, you're seeing 40 amazing animals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so that was really and it was it totally met my imagination and exceeded what i expected it to be well didn't you say that one of the the gorillas like jo like jokingly punched sierra yeah it bopped her on the knee that, oh okay, okay okay yeah that's yeah. okay that's like that's a fun oh and by the way the italian girl saw that happen and then was trying to elicit Initiate. it oh, God. and then got it herself like a 20 minutes later and she was like pretty cool not many people can say that they've been hit on the knee by a gorilla and I'm like, my fucking wife can. Yeah. And she did it first. <laughs> so then you did not have to see her again. The second day, is it like... It's the same thing, but, but we went to a different like psyched, family. You're psyched for it? You're like, and we know the process. And we asked for an easier hike. 
And that day, not the first day, we drove like an hour and a half to the starting point and an hour and a half home. And that was kind of like, geez, this is crazy. Second day, we asked our guy, we were like, is there a closer starting point and a slightly easier hike? And they were like, sure, no problem. And they brought us to a different family. This time, it was only a 25 minute drive. And we hiked for 40 minutes. Wow. And we were with the family. Cool. It was easy. It was really easy. And the family was awesome. Um, this one had three silverbacks. Um, not not it not one not an alpha that was this is like the biggest alpha of all the habituated families so to see him like that's the king kong um and yeah man it was really really cool uh these the second family we saw was like eating a lot more than mm-hmm. playing and that was pretty cool they the babies ride around on the backs of the adults mm-hmm. so that's kind of cool swinging through the bamboo trees i got some cool pictures man yes, dude. sick i to um, see more of them yeah that's dope and uh and then we left rwanda and uh went on to mozambique which i won't spend much time talking about that i mean we it was beachy it was mm-hmm. i will say that like we thought by flying all the way from rwanda down to south africa and then out to mozambique that we would be finding a more unique off the beaten path beach honeymoon piece than say the Seychelles or mm. you know Mauritius or whatever and when we got to Mozambique our our hotel our lodge on the beach which was like 20 huts and very boutique it was like 18 American couples on honeymoon that's crazy that's so funny it could not have Can't been more them. us everybody with the same idea right right which is funny that that's like a thing i think americans feel that south africa is the most accessible part of africa (laughs) so a lot of them do their safari down there in kruger you know places like that and then they go for their beach portion out to most because there's only an hour and a half flight out there makes sense interesting dude yeah it's funny how like there's always a new thing because like dude even like when we were younger, I mean, maybe I just wasn't in the mix yet, but like, I don't think people were going to Seychelles for their honeymoon yet. Yeah. Like, that's become like a popular place. Exactly. Yeah. You know? So um, it's like trying to uncover new whatever. Yeah, I, we we thought Mozambique would be really unique and all that, and it still was. Don't get me wrong. I mean, we like the snorkeling was like mind blowing. There was a great moment where we, you know, we went, we were snorkeling over this awesome reef, incredible diversity of, of fish life, and big turtles sierra's obsessed with turtles me and our guide that we were with were like diving under with our snorkels and patting the turtle on the back and i was like you know the, the waves were a little rough and i was like telling sierra she got to do it and she was like i don't know i don't know if i can and she did it and we were just going fucking nuts for her because <laughs> she got to like rub the back of the turtle and i don't know it was a really great moment and then like the second to last night this other couple had gone out on a fishing trip with you know sponsored by the lodge or whatever and we watched them come in off the boat at like 1 p.m. as we were having lunch. And they had a huge cooler. And out of the cooler, they just pulled six gigantic tuna. Mm. That they oh, caught. Wow, that's and sick. then that night, we had sashimi, sushi, and tuna steaks wow. from their catch that day. Mm. Dude, it that's was sick. That's sick. bomb. That's sick. The freshest fish. I mean, unbelievable. And then we flew home, and uh, that was our honeymoon. Awesome, awesome, man. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, it's nice to... And to to cap off the adventures with a little beach time, yeah, chilling. Well, we needed it because Kenya and Rwanda, those animal mo- the you know days, it is very adventure heavy. You're up yeah. at five in the morning, you know, six a.m. You're going, you're hiking, you're you're driving around, jostling. There's no. Yeah. Even our dinners at night, we'd be so exhausted yeah. that there's no like longing gazes of like, can you believe we just got married? Yeah. It's like, Jesus, just fall right do we asleep. even want to drink? Like, let's yeah. just go to bed at 830. How many of those nights were you drinking? Pretty much every night. Every single night. But we... One or two. One night or two. Cap. I mean, we would, we would be tired, dude. Yeah. We were sm- I was battling with the jet lag for the time change for the first like five days. Mm. I'm not great at that. It's pretty significant. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's not easy. My like the the what did did you try to do anything in particular to like get used to it? Uh yeah. I mean I was taking um I would take like a little, you know, half a Xanax or whatever, uh, 
just to try to keep myself asleep because we were it was really hard to stay awake till like nine o'clock and i knew that if i fell asleep at seven i would wake up at midnight and be wired which Mm -hmm. happened one of the nights and then you wake and by like 3 p.m you're toast yeah um but yeah finally like you just kind of extend half an hour an hour each morning until you're finally waking up at you know five six a.m. Mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. I was okay. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It's tough, dude. I my trick is like, if I sleep on the flight or not, like I, I typically don't really. And like, mm-hmm. then when you arrive wherever you're going, you like hit the hard nap, especially if you get in like you know eleven, because you usually have a couple of little administrative things you need to do, sort some stuff out, hit that nap hard, and make sure that you like go to dinner, and yeah. you'll fall asleep again. Yeah, that's like I mean, it's it's not foolproof, but no. it definitely works. It, it it was a battle, but dude, you know, awesome honeymoon. Truly glad we did a full two weeks. Do you in have Africa. like a like a tagline takeaway from it, or or something? Is there like one thought that you like have? Is it how are you? How have you changed? I don't know something, anything like that. Um, you know something? I uh, this is not the sort of hashtag or overarching thought but i will say that um in rwanda especially i saw a lot of mothers who had young children toddlers that were strapped to their backs they like wear them around Mm -hmm. their backs that's how they put their like papoose or whatever it's like a little backpack Yeah, yeah in a in a sort of cloth and these women were tilling fields swinging you know scythes farm equipment and working hard manual labor with these babies strapped to their backs and it made me think boy you know maybe parenting isn't as hard as i thought (laughs) like over here everyone's like oh you know, yeah. he keeps waking up at three in the morning. It's like, yo, try fucking farming yeah. the land with your baby and your strapped backpack. to your back. We have yeah. it pretty fucking good over here. Um, so I don't know. That was one thought. And then also just like, you know, being with my wife for two straight weeks nonstop with like nobody else around and getting along the entire time. It's like, oh, yeah. I married the right person. That's fun. That's fun. Did you have any vacation scuffles? There was like one day, I don't even know what it, I can't, I couldn't remember one little tiff that we instantly laughed off because Mm -hmm. it's like, look where we are. You know, Mm -hmm. this is amazing. Plus you're just exhausted for a while. Um, which always makes me a little more combative, but yeah, man. Um, I think, I think that, Africa gave me a a real appreciation for the comfort of my life Mm -hmm. uh it it gave me a much starker understanding of what hard work really is um it also reminded me of how I don't need as much shit as I think I need Mm -hmm. um that a lot of my material wants are bullshit uh and that ultimately because i had the thought of like okay well we could move to mozambique start a little fishing chartering company or like maybe build a little five room boutique in here for honeymooners run it make way less than we make right now and be very happy for the Mm -hmm. rest of our lives theoretically you're marooning yourself but this idea that I need to make this much more, I need to make this much more by this age in order for us to have a happy family. I have to increase my salary X. It's like, no, you can change your circumstances and yeah. live well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah. I think it's important to, that's why I think it's important to get out there. You know what I mean? I know like, obviously I'm going to say that, but like you need perspective and like, so you're, you get bogged down by a lot of nonsense and you'll come back and you'll forget all the lessons you learned. Like you won't, you'll remember them, but you won't feel them right. the way that you do. 
and uh, try to hang on to it as long as you can. Yeah, man. Because uh, you know it's only a matter of time until you start walking by that window and I know, dude. see that fucking know. piece in the piece hanging there, spinning around on the little display. <laughs> and you're like, I need that. I need that thing. Um, that's great, too. So, dude, I have something funny. I think we have a little bit of time here. So, we have 10 minutes left. Tell us about your entire time in yeah. Afghanistan. <laughs> we're going to have to push it. We're going to have to push nah, it. You can fit it in, Julia. We're going to have on. to push it. Come on. Um, I only needed four episodes to tell my fucking honeymoon <laughs> story. Um, well, first of all, okay, a couple things. So, we, Hillary and I went to uh, the movies. It's not as interesting necessarily as a honeymoon. It's okay. But we're this we're is back good. on Earth. So, we went to the movies. We, I was looking forward to spending the night with her. I've been doing a ton of spots, and it's nice to have a night when you've been doing spots every single day to, like, then you have nothing to do. Yeah. Which is funny. When you don't have, like, when you're not that busy, then having nothing to do doesn't feel that good. Right. But when you are, okay. So, I'm like, I would like to spend the night with you. Whoa. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was like, what do you want to do? I was like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, should we go to the movie? She's like, sure. I was like, what do you want to see? And she's like, she says some movie I've never heard of. I'm like, all right, yeah, let's go see that. I eventually figure out while I'm sitting with you, which by the way, that was a whole thing too. So, um, so I'm with Francis at the comedy club. Anyway, so this is the movie uh, with Harry Styles and f- what's the girl? Olivia Wilde, Florence darling. Pugh. Florence yeah. Pugh. Yeah, don't worry, darling. Um, I had no idea what the movie was like. I'm actually not going to tell you anything about it because it's fun to go in uh, in the dark. I thought it was great. Um, you but saw d- it too, Ryan? No, good man oh. for not. Uh, yeah, I loved it. Um, cool. So I, you know, I was sort of skeptical because I just for some reason assumed it was going to be a rom com because Harry Styles was in it. <laughs> Hillary also just recently saw Harry Styles in concert and like loved the concert or whatever. So I was kind of like, all right, this is. It. But no, so like I didn't even know. I didn't put two and two together about all the controversy. There's a bunch of shit going on with that movie, uh, which I'm not totally sure about. You guys probably have all heard about it. We can talk about it a little bit, I guess. But at the movie theater, it was like the most bizarre. It must have just been filled with Harry Styles fans Hmm. specifically because at the end of the movie, I looked and I actually took a video just in case like there was some way we were going to use that of all the entire theater just being like teenage girls. No way. Dude, in his dramatic scenes, the entire theater would just start laughing and applauding (laughs) in times that made no sense. And dude, I have a recording of it because I was like, I need to capture this because it happened probably 15 times in the movie. And I, I've marked it, and I'm going to play it for and you guys. And they're laughing? Dude, laughing and, like, applauding. at, And it was, like, laughing because they love him. Yeah. They're like, oh, look at him. They weren't, like, making fun of him. Uh-huh. I was not sure what you wanted, and you never text me back. Bro, that's not a funny moment in the movie. No. Like, you, you know what that reminds me of? It's <laughs> dying like, laughing. It's like Beatlemania. Dude, it was crazy. No, it it's is. like little young women, girls who are so smitten with a person that they they are they're overcome. Yeah, but okay, so yeah, dude, it was like really crazy to just see this like big star be bigger than a movie. Which mm. honestly, I know people are it's controversial as to whether or not it's good. I thought it was great. Mm. The genre is something I'm really I typically I tend to be into. I thought it was really solid. Florence Pugh is am I saying that right? Yeah, Pugh. Phenomenal. Like P U. As one word, pew. Is it like P-E-W? No, it's P-U-G-H. Oh. Oh, wow. Okay. Pew. Pew. Uh, dude, she's fucking great. Is she? Um, Boy, she's good in Midsommar. She is. That's a crazy movie. Yeah, crazy movie. Um. So anyway, highly recommend the movie. And okay, so can I allowed to talk about what was happening when we were before we went to see the movie at all? Uh, I, let's see if I can do it okay. without yeah. making anything bad. Okay. Francis ends up in the midst of a controversy that somehow huh. go figure. <laughs> somehow, <laughs> what do you know? God forbid Francis can fucking live two weeks without causing a stir, dude. Causing a stir. So anyway, he kind of comes upstairs, and we're sitting. I'm doing what I think Francis thinks I'm doing at a comedy club, which he's right about. Sitting at a table with seemingly nowhere to go and no <laughs> desire to go anywhere. <laughs> He's like, Julia just really enjoys this. And he just like, whatever. So he shows up. He's like, you guys are never going to believe this. And he basically just tells us this like 
for any of us at the table, what would have been just a horror scenario, and it's just like a Tuesday for Francis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'd gotten in trouble, and I'd been told off for it. But Francis is shook still, and, you know, all everybody at the table is sort of feeling for him, even sort of like people who you're actually surprised how compassionate they're feeling for him. Mm. So we then decide how, like, we try to help him to figure out how to deal with the situation. We then sort of see him dealing with it over our shoulder, and everybody is just shook, dude. They're like, oh, my God. They're like, I wish I could just crawl into a hole and die. Yeah, like, yeah. Is, <laughs> oh, no. We see him kind of trying, and he's, he maybe is pulling. We can't actually tell how it's going. Uh, and I think it was maybe going – Neutrally at, at the, that time, it was not going well. Yeah, it seemed like it wasn't going well, and right. it actually seemed like what was about to start was. So Francis does this thing where <laughs> he will apologize for something, but there's a chance that the way that you can, the way you react to the apology, will make him upset. And I was worried that that was happening. Yeah, like uh, listen, <laughs> you, I get to a point where where sometimes if I I know I've done wrong and I will apologize for the thing that I think I did wrong and and the thing I'm being accused of. But if you don't accept my apology, then I don't know what else we can do. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like that, short of what, what do you want to become work for you? So here's like, my question. <laughs> what here's, am I supposed to do? Totally. So here's my question then. So is that what it is? Because you, one could argue, say you apologize and I'm like, I don't accept that. Then it, you, for you to get mad shows me that you didn't mean the apology. It's not that though. <laughs> It's not that. <laughs> if you said, I don't accept your apology, go fuck right, yourself, right. I would be like, all right, well, I get well, it. Okay, if I say I go it. fuck yourself, that's Whatever, different. I don't accept your apology, I'd mm -hmm. be like, okay, I understand. I did wrong. Hopefully in time you will mm -hmm. forgive me right. again. I'm sorry. Let's go our separate ways. Right. What I have had happen that is hard, that I don't like, is when I deliver – a, a, a very self-effacing and aware apology that is heartfelt and sincere. And I cover everything and I say, I understand why this was upsetting. Right. And someone says, I really appreciate that. Thank you. All good. All good. But what did you, what, like, what about this? Mm -hmm. And they start like adding more, things so you think to my they're taking advantage tab. they're taking advantage of the position that you're now in and they're like and it's they as if they're like they're like well wait hold on and 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 this part too don't leave that out you got to pay for that too and then i'll be like oh you're right no of course and if you keep and if you're like yeah no that's okay all right thank you and then they're and then they keep I've had this happen where it's like someone will be like, they, they accept your apology, but then it keep asking you to apologize for more things where you're like, hang on a second. I've given you everything that I feel I need to apologize for. And now you're just degrading me. Mm -hmm. in a way right, right, right. you're yeah. kind of yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Bake, bake, asking like, oh, me to you're grovel like insulting you you're asking and, yeah, me yeah. to like get on my knees and grovel for your forgiveness mm -hmm. like i'm not going to debase myself i do agree that i did something wrong and i will i have apologized for it and i do apologize for it but if that's not enough mm -hmm. i can't help you beyond what i've given you right. and then i've done that before and then they're mad mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then they're mad mm -hmm. and I don't know where the line is. Like, where are you? What are you? How far are you supposed to just give in? Is well, it, yeah, it's, is okay. it constant? So there's, there's a couple of things. So if you apologize, right. And you give a nice apology. Great. Okay. Accept it. Also, here are some other things that upset me. There's a way to sort of like conduct yourself and, the, and make it into a discussion. If there are on stones that need to be over or unturned or whatever. And I think you'd probably be open to that. It's it's more of the like a uh, taking advantage of the situation that sounds as if is the thing yeah. that upsets you. Where it's like, oh yeah, I bet you're fucking sorry, you fucking dick. Well, <laughs> <laughs> it's more like like there are things that might come up where I disagree. Where I'm like, oh, actually, that thing you are okay, now asking okay. me for an apology for. I don't agree about I that part. I don't think that that I that I was wrong there. Okay. But if you if you stop. Then they get mad. And then the whole apology is thrown out the window because mm. they're just leaving with, with this thought that you have not 
offered a full apology. And maybe those some people aren't aren't always ready to be apologized. Can so. I give you an example of right? this? Yes. When I was in seventh grade, Jesus, <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude. We were playing Capture the Flag. <laughs> it's a good game. There was a free safe <laughs> alley a, along game. the side, right? That you could be on on your opponent's side. And there were people who would always guard me because I was pretty fast. And there were a couple girls in my grade that I was friends with who were like assigned to guard me. And I was in seventh grade. And they were like, why don't you come on out? You afraid? You're going to stay in the alley all day? And this was right around the age where I had sort of discovered foul language and was using it a little more liber liberally. And I think I said something like, you, the only way you could get me to come out there is if you pull me out by my penis. <laughs> and I didn't say it sexually. It was I was in I was twelve. I wasn't being like, why don't you give me a hand job? I was like, you know, the only way is if you drag me out by my dick. Basically, I said that right. Those four girls went and immediately told on me. Oh wow! And I got pulled in. I think by, by the, the penis? way, no, hold on. Yeah. <laughs> hey. uh, by the way, I forgot. I said it specifically to one girl who had said the initial, like, come on out, you're a coward, blah, 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 right? The other three girls were not even around, I don't think. The one girl immediately went and told on me. I got sent to the principal's office. I'm in there, right? She's telling me, like, we're going to have to talk about this. As I'm sitting there, all four girls came in, right? And... They started go like the principal sat them down and started asking them each individually why what I had said had hurt them. And the first girl that I had said it to was like, you know, obviously you said it to me. It hurt my feelings. And I was like, yep. Okay. Next. Fair. I'm sorry. The next girl was like, when I heard that you had said this to Maddie, <laughs> I just, it bummed me out because you're my friend. And I was like, why the fuck is this girl in here? <laughs> I said something like that. I didn't say fuck, but I was like, these that. three are not offended. I was not. I did not tell any of you to grab my There's penis. not collateral offense. It's, I actually think they were on my team <laughs> in the game. And I ended up having to do community service, which meant what? dusting the books in the library at this fucking private school. So for them to give me community service was so preposterous. It's like, all right, you really want me to do community service? Send me to a soup kitchen. I'll go there. Don't go have me Some dust bullshit. up these pristine books that were just <laughs> bought. What the fuck are we talking about here? I'm Com certain I was- That's also not community service. Exactly. That's just serving the fucking- <laughs> It's like, let's go polish the toe of the statue of yeah. our founder. Get the fuck out of here. I'm certain I was the only student at that school that had ever done community service. And it was probably something they just stumbled upon for that occasion. Dude, yeah, that's annoying. I cannot believe it took us this long to get to this story. That's a true story. I'm saying it took us 300 and how many episodes? 46. 346 episodes to get to the pull by the penis story. It's, I'm shocked. By the way, I'm dumb. For the record, and I hope I can say this, I got I I got in trouble a lot growing up. I was always getting in trouble for shit like this. You know, whatever. I too sort of did too. This this was one where my dad after pulled me aside because I was like crying because I was like, why does this keep happening to me? Like, what am I? I, I you know, obviously I knew it fucked up, but like. Does that really warrant, like, I, I had, you know, four free periods or, like, eight free periods taken away from me, and I loved playing tetherball and, like, soccer and during, the you know, our recess or whatever, and now I had to go to the library to dust these books. Mm -hmm. My dad pulled me aside and was like, this was the first time where he was like, I don't think you did anything wrong here. <laughs> he was fundamentally like, we're going we're gonna to deal with this, but, like. You're fine. You're okay. Like in the future, just don't tell girls to grab your pecker. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> oh, he, he was like, he was like uh, to have an, uh, an authority figure, my, uh, my father, on my side against these, this like jury of my peers was a very, it was the first time in my life where an adult was like, I disagree with the way that the punishment was meted out. Mm. And I disagree with the verdict. And where I was like, oh, it, it's not universal. Mm. Not everyone. Oh, there's right, no right, consensus right, right, right. among adults yeah. about whether a child has done something 
wrong necessarily. It was the first time at in that age that I had seen that, mm -hmm. which was a really eye opening moment. Because then you start to think, well, maybe not everyone's right, and maybe I can stand up for myself when I think a punishment is wrong and not everything that an adult says is correct. Right, right, right. What a big moment, dude. You unlocked the portal. But it is true. I mean, I think it's it's interesting. Like, there were times where I thought that the teachers were wrong and they may very well have been. I like don't remember specifics. But like, that is also a shitty parent to be. Like, you need to toe the line well of like being objective. Yeah. Whereas like the kids whose parents thought they were right tend to be like the shittiest people I know. Yeah. Pretty consistently. Right. Even as adults. Um, but just automatically going with this fucking random adult be to teach your kids a lesson isn't always correct. So it's good that yeah. he used some discretion. No, there were there were other there were lots of other things I got in trouble for where my parents were like, Yeah, you yeah. have to you that was dumb. To you <laughs> they're right. And then that one was like, Yeah, I mean, this feels a little bit like an overreaction. Yeah. Um, all right, let's wrap it up here. Yeah. Um, Ryan, what do you got for us, pal? Quick Here, today. Give us a facts with Ryan. Facts with Ryan. Pull me out by my penis, Ryan. <laughs> okay. Were they lying? <laughs> Scott's Tots Office, episode 12 from season six. Nice. And That's the office, right? That's yeah. the office. And then we talked about this a couple weeks ago about Rotten Tomatoes and the discrepancy between the tomato scores and then the audience sure. score. Sure. The movie you saw, Don't Worry Darling, when the scores originally came out, it got a 38% by the official people mm -hmm. that are critics. the official, yeah, the critics. Audience score 77. Okay. So uh -huh. big discrepancy. The style I'm going to go see it after, up, yeah. after hearing I, what I you said. Okay. I liked it. Um, great. Yeah. What do you got, Francis? Is that it, Ryan? That's it. Wow. We were very of, accurate we were, today. We were killing it. We were very accurate we today. Were Only two good episode, Ryan. boys. Um, October 14th, 15, Wise Guys in Utah. And then uh, October 20th and the Evening News in Charlotte. Uh, come check me out. Hell bye yeah. Bye-bye.